JSC Hunter here. And today I'm going to show you some of the basics of this land is my land. So I'm going to start a new resistance here. So I have no idea what the map will bring to me. I'll cut out some of the loading because it can be quite long. So let's see how it goes. Alright, the first thing we have to do here is to pick our name. And based on these names, you'll get some statistics, some perks. Well, in this case, is my regular name is not very good, especially for the weight hit that I have right here. By default you can carry 40 weight, so with minus 20 that means I can only carry 20 pounds of weight. And the rifle, well, the rifle is easily, well, the rifle 50 pounds, so that five pounds of ammo and I cannot carry anything else, so that's not very efficient. What if I leave off the numbers? I get exactly the same. So the thing I figured out is it ignores numbers. So you can try to uh, see if you can hack it to, uh, to really understand what it does. So if I do nothing, so there is no letter in here, this would be the default. But for example, if I would add A, I would get 40 health. Capital A same thing, so it's not case sensitive. Let's try the next letter. That's a lot better, right? A lot of health, a lot of SP. Let's go to the H. More health. Now what if I combine them? The last one. E was good, H was good. What if both of them? Well, not bad, but not what I expected. All the way around. Completely different. So the generation it is based on the letters, but it's not as easy as one letter equals uh, an amount of health, and it changes monthly. So at this point, I think the popular ones is Dracula. which will give you health generation, which I find very useful. Although it is unlockable, so you don't necessarily need it as a starting skill. It saved my life many times. He had some skill points, additional stamina, more warriors and some weight. Recently I've been playing with this one. Which has an even bigger weight bonus. And as I explained earlier, weight can make a big difference here. This comes with some additional health, health generation and five additional warriors to start with. I'll start with this, and then I'll see again once the loading is done. Oh yeah, I'll just start far from the frontier and take it nice and slow. Alright, so the game starts off with a tutorial. So basically the first thing they want you to do is craft a bow and arrow. So I hit the tab key, which will give me my general menu for where I'll do most of my things. And they gave me just enough resources. To craft a bow. Let's do that. and to craft some wooden arrows. These are very low damage, so don't expect to take down a bear with this. 
Although I did see someone do it, but it was quite a long, uh, a long haul. All right, so they'll start with the introduction on gathering resources, because things you want, you may have to craft also for uh, b uh, expanding your base. You need resources. So one of the things you can do is you can highlight certain things. Right now, I'll select this mission. And it should help me locate things I'm looking for. But you see, there's a few highlights there. So these are the items that are relevant for this mission. Some hickory. More hickory. Can't go over here. There is hickory over here. There is some flux over here. Let's take it. More flux over here. And over here. It's always good to pick up flux when uh, when you come across it. So, this is what you won't be doing most of the time. Because these are things that you want to delegate to your warriors. Collecting resources. Alright, so we have enough. So, a better way is to let your warriors collect it for you. So once again I hit tab key, I can click on my camp, then we have the gather button here, and you can say what you want them to gather, in this case we want to gather flex. I'll just send one warrior, no horses, no weapons, well I don't have any weapons so there's not much to pick from. All right. Another thing that's very useful, you can also tell them to craft certain things. You go click again on the, the camp menu, you go to orders, and there you can there you can add an order. So for example, let's make sure we have some wooden arrows in stock. About 30 that should be enough. Alright, now let's... another thing that's handy to do since we have quite some warriors, let's gather some wood and let's do an order for some wooden bows. Not too many. Five should be plenty. So they will have something to defend themselves. By default nobody has a weapon. I, I didn't even have a weapon. I had to craft it as well. So now sometimes when the, the you have uh, weapons in your base people who are gathering will bring a weapon along to defend themselves from wildlife or enemies. Now, what happens if they, for example, have a nice weapon that you want to have, you want to get from storage, but it's not there, since someone took it? Well, what you can do is simply cancel their task, and then they will return to the village. And what you can see here also, one thing to note, that's, that's a funny thing, See, I just ordered one person to uh, go for fluke, flux, flex, and one person to go for wood, but there's also two additional wood and one additional flex being gathered. That's because of my orders. So for the wooden arrows, I only need wood, so that's the second wood person. For the wooden bow, I need wood and flex, so that's why I have them as well. So out of my warriors, five are working. By just doing two orders and two 
normal getters. All right, so that's the. This is the basic way um, to uh, to gather resources and make basic elements. They cannot create something that you cannot create yourself. And to unlock new uh, crafts, you can go to. Uh, I think it's crafts. Yeah, and here you can learn other recipes for an amount of skill points. So I could, for example, learn how to create a hunter bow for 500 skill points. Same goes for arrows and other equipment, traps, meals. They're all unlockable for different amounts of skill points. Another thing that is quite handy and shouldn't be forgotten is you have some free upgrades available to you. That's the war paint. If you don't apply it, you don't have the bonuses. You just have no bonuses. If you do apply them, as you can see here, you have some. Uh, well, you have better uh, detection radius. You have more camo. And if you have a full set, you will have, in this case, uh, some health per second of recovering. You have more forest camo and more enemy detection radius. So you can choose to combine two or go full on on one, uh, one set and have the additional uh, full set bonus. So in this case, it's, it's more based on attacking, bow accuracy, Heal wounds. Well, I won't be. Hopefully, I will be mostly doing close quarter kills, so I don't care that much for the bow actually at this time. So I'll focus on my camo. So I'll go for head, body, and appearance, uh, and hair, and I'll make them into the lone raccoon charcoal. And just for real, real, realism, I'll remove the metal parts from my loadout as it would make way too much noise and I think even the bracelets would make too much noise when sneaking up on enemies so I'll just leave it like this so this is me in the game you cannot change your uh, further appearance your, your, your looks or your gender I don't think the gender change will be there since the chiefs were almost always men but Perhaps some customization in uh, in body build can be uh, added later. But we'll see. It's still an alpha, so it's uh, it still can go either way. All right. So there's by default a few missions that we can do. So an easy one is find an old camp and take leftover items. Let's just find out where it is. It's right over there. And let's see if I can unlock a skill here. Yeah, I love the spyglass, so I can look a bit ahead what's coming. Alright, so that's that for the basic controls. Keep in mind, don't forget that you can cancel any uh, resource gatherings from this menu. It took me quite some time to, to find it. Uh, you can zoom in and out of the map with the scroll. You can zoom in really close and really far out. And this is about the size of the map. You can see enemy territories. And it's generated each time you start the game. So each time the map will be different. So let's go over there. Right click to place a waypoint on the map. Let's start by taking a horse. You start with two horses. It will grow slowly as you progress. Let's just take my horse out of the pen. And close the pen again. We don't want the other one to run off. Well, they don't, so don't worry about it. But Just for aesthetics. Alright, uh, basic controls here. You move with WASD. Shift Sprint works on horses as well. It takes getting used to the controls because there's currently only one 
control scheme available, that is uh, the horse moves uh, let's say the controls go a uh, horse, horse relative and not view relative, so if you look to the side it won't move along you really have to use the A and D keys to steer otherwise you're not going anywhere yeah, sometimes the game is still a little bit buggy giving you damage for no reason but well it is what it is I think I need to be up on those cliffs Let's see if I can get up around here oh, still and that's one of the tough things in the game it's the the mountain ridges they may be they, they, they sometimes stretch out quite far. Oh, still no end. Well, let's just keep going around until we find a way to get up. Nope, still all rocky. Here's a way to get up. Oh, well, or so I thought. Maybe we can get up. Yep. And now. Right, one other thing. If you get stuck, you can get unstuck as well. It will cost some skill points. But if you're in a pinch, it may just... Uh, it may just save you. Okay, so I'm not going... I need to go... 40 meters to the left, but there's no way to get there. Come on, horse, climb. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I don't want to fall down here. Uh, get back. Whew, that was close. Almost died down there. Yes, yeah, so you won't take damage from hitting a tree, but you will take damage from falling. So here is the camp, all right. Okay, so. So everything you see here, it has weight, right? So this is very heavy. Together it's nine pounds, so it's three pounds each. So this bow, it's a nice one, it's high quality. I'll take it. But this bow cannot shoot wooden arrows, so this bow can only shoot medium and medium arrows and regular arrows. So I have 20 arrows, so that's a good one. So this is a good one to replace my current bow. Let's take it. Take all of that. Let's just take all of it. Well, my weight, you can see at the top here, you see my stamina, my health and my weight. I'm at 43.30 so if I didn't have the 25 pounds additional I would be overburdened now and if you're overburdened you think well I can ride a horse no you can't so if you're if you're carrying too much weight you cannot ride a horse you really need to drop something or uh, use something before you can do that all right so now I have a second weapon now I can switch weapons by holding the one and then I get a menu where I can say which ones I want to select now let's go for a new one. You can even choose which arrows you want to use. Just go for the regular arrow. To use the bow, simply right click to aim and left click to fire. Not going to do it now because these are not wooden arrows, these are serious arrows. So don't want to waste them. Next what you can do is go if you press 2, you get a menu of all your consumables, usable items, and you can use them from here. So for a health boost, traps, and other things. Another useful one is if you hold down the E button, you get a list of skills. Now, Spyglass, I have that because I unlocked it from, my sk from the skill menu. 
the top four ones is the ones you have by default. So throwing a stone. Well, it is what it says. At the bottom you see hold G. And then you can pick where you want to throw the stone. So throwing a stone can distract an enemy, but it, it can also distract multiple enemies. So it can lure more than one enemy in your direction. Which may not always be desirable, since if you're sneaking you want to have it mostly one on one. So for that, if you want to have just one person at a time, you can lure the enemy. So for this to work you need to aim it at a human, horse doesn't count. And then hit G again, and then you will howl like wolf and only one will come investigating. So that's a good one. Next you can smoke herbs to skip time, you can rest to save, but you can only do that uh, near uh, one of your camps. So I'll put it back on the spyglass. If you're curious what it looks like, this is level 1 spyglass, it's not very clear. You cannot take enemies with the first tier, you can take enemies with the second tier, and with the third tier the attacking goes even quicker. Now, let's go back to my camp. So here we see the mountain ridge that I was trying to get around. So now let's go to the right. Let's stop by this outpost. And then go back to the camp. See there's a lot of flex here, but I'm not stopping to pick it up as it's already being collected from my camp. Alright, so now I'm near a campsite. Here we go. And what I can do is I can activate this. And now I can rest here, I can save here, and I can also fast travel. Fast travel works like this. Once you're near a camp or one of these rest sites, you can then click on your camp or outposts or other unlocked uh, sites and then you can travel. It will take some time depending on the diff distance, so in this case it says 3 hours. Usually it's quicker to, well in game time, to just go there. But it may be just as easy to just, uh, if you want to skip it or if you have tough terrain in the middle, you may want to uh, do a fast travel. And your horse, don't worry about it, you can't fast travel well on a horse, but if you fast travel and you get your horse with you, it will fast travel with you so you don't lose your horse. So a good thing to do is unload your loot right here in your camp. Now I have my wooden bow, I have my wooden arrows which I don't need anymore. You can hit the shift if you want to uh, move over multiple items so now I do shift left click and all of them are to the right. You can hold it alt and then click and that let you choose a number. On this case it's, it's a one or two, so let's just move one. And you can see at this point it bugs out because there are still two in my inventory and there is one in the inventory of the camp. This is a little bug, so if I check my inventory again you'll see that I only have one left. So this is a small bug that is currently still in the game. So using shift, it will automatically work. Using alt, just go out of the inventory, go back in, and just check if it works. Alright, so, now they created one wooden arrow in the meantime, because I put five there. They have collected some flax, they've collected some wood. They've not created bows yet. And the one bow that I put in there, it's already gone. Now where did the bow go? Well, there's someone collecting wood and he took a bow and five arrows. 
And now, of course, I could cancel this by simply clicking on the X. Alright, so that's it for the basic controls and basic, basic game mechanics. And I'll go a bit deeper in ambushing enemies in the next video. Hope to see you then.